Good evening. We begin tonight with our continuing coverage of teen violence in the Valley. A 17 year old accused of taking part in multiple teen assaults appeared in juvenile court today after admitting to two counts of aggravated assault. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Curtis and I'm Cuddy Bedivine. That teen was sentenced as parents of his victims sat in the courtroom. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono was inside during the hearings and she's joining us live in Mesa tonight. Bianca. Guys, our cameras were not allowed inside during the hearing because it was a juvenile court hearing, but the suspect we're talking about is 17 year old Jacob Meisner. And not only was he involved in these two assault cases, he's also one of the seven suspects accused of murdering Preston Lord. Inside a juvenile courtroom in Mesa Friday, justice was served for two East Valley families. I'm glad that we're able to see um, justice start to get served. We're just a little overwhelmed. Joe Beth Palmer and Rachel Jorgensen share an unfortunate bond. Both of their teenage sons were assaulted by a group of suspects, including Jacob Meisner. Meisner, who has been in juvenile detention since January, has now accepted a plea for two counts of aggravated assault for his role in a November 2022 attack on Jorgensen's son in Gilbert and a May 2023 attack on Palmer's son in Mesa. I don't know if lucky is the word. I feel so lucky, but someone else lost their life because we weren't able to stop it. That's not okay. That's not lucky. She's talking about the death of Preston Lord, a 16 year old who was beaten to death outside of a party in October of 2023. And Meisner is one of the seven suspects accused of killing him. He's been charged with first degree murder. It's gut wrenching that it wasn't able to be stopped in that 11 months before this happened. Both Palmer and Jorgensen stood up during Meisner's hearing, sharing the impact his actions have had on their families. There's still the um, emotional and mental that our son deals with every day. It's not wanting to do all the kid things that he used to be able to do. After Meisner's attorney and a probation officer praised the 17 year old for his behavior in custody, noting he's graduated high school and his has taken advantage of treatment programs, he was ultimately sentenced to probation. But with his most serious charges looming large, he will remain in juvenile detention until he turns 18 early next year, at which point he'll be transferred to adult custody. Until every single one of these defendants or attackers are in jail, the healing can't start because there's always that possibility of it happening again. And outside of court, Meisner's attorney said he was pleased with the outcome today, but wouldn't comment on the Lord case. The Lord case, as it stands, is set to go to trial next year. Now, Christopher Fantastic, another suspect involved in the assault on Palmer's son, is expected to be sentenced on Monday. We're live in Mesa tonight. Bianca Bono, 12 News. All right, Bianca, thank you. Tonight, a massive wildfire continues to scorch northeast Scottsdale, leading to dozens of people evacuating their homes, and many others are being told that they may have to do the same. The Boulder View fire has now scorched more than 3,700 acres, and they still have 0% containment. Here's a map of where that fire is burning. 12 News journalist Chase Golightly joins us live from Bartlett Dam and Cave Creek Road. And Chase, have we learned if any of the homes or structures out there that are in that fire zone, have they been destroyed or are they safe? Mark Kribe, fortunately, we were told no homes have been burned due to this fire. And at the same time, we also learned that it was human cause, and that's what started this. And today, more than 200 firefighters were called out battling the elements to try to extinguish these flames. In triple digit temperatures and rough terrain, fire crews battled the Boulder View fire all day Friday. Nearly 250 firefighters were called out to attack the flames by ground and air. Tankers and the airplanes and the helicopter dropping some water and, and slurry on the homes to the north. 60 homes remain evacuated with many more prepared to leave at a moment's notice. The fire growing considerably since it sparked Thursday evening, with some owners being woken up by emergency crews at 3 a.m. Friday, telling them they needed to leave immediately. Just like sheer instant panic. Danny Nelson was one of them. Oh crap, like this is, you know, this is serious. But she had more than just her family to pack up. She also had to get her horses and other livestock loaded up and out. A situation she says many living here 
also had to go through. I mean, this is how a lot of people out in this area make their living. The Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management announced that the Red Cross opened an evacuation center at Cactus Shadows High School. However, when we went there, it appeared no one who was evacuated from the fire was staying there. But for those who do need it, officials say it will reopen Saturday morning at 7 a.m. as crews try to get some sort of containment on the fire. And we also learned tonight that Bartlett Lake is closed. In fact, this road behind me, you can see, is completely blocked off. This is the main route to get to Bartlett Lake. And we actually spoke with some campers who were unaware and had to turn back around. We do not know when it is set to reopen at this time, but be sure to stick with us at 12 News on air and online as we keep you updated on the situation. For now, we're live and far North Scottsdale. Chase Golightly, 12 News. All right, we appreciate it. Thanks so much, Chase. Well, fire crews battled more hot and dry conditions all day today with more expected over the weekend. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley has our wet. My earring just fell. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, the, cell phone. maybe the words. Now, just did you use so one or two quarters <laughs> in the bubble gum machine to get those? <laughs> she used two. <laughs> Definitely it's two. It's the 50 cent machine. Okay. Yeah. I forgot the bag. It was the dollar 50 machine. <laughs> I mean, I could have blamed her if it was the 25 cent machine. Yeah, exactly. You need your money back. <laughs> All right, yeah, those firefighters, they had a rough day out there today as temperatures were above 110 degrees. Still contending with some gusty winds out there tonight on the order of over 25 miles per hour. Now, some folks did see rain today. We did not see rain on those fire lines. Here's an hour by hour forecast. Temperatures all night on the fire lines will be in the 90s. So very warm through the overnight. And tomorrow, we start off the day at 94 and highs will be similar to today in the 110 range. No storms are expected in the vicinity of the fire. Here's our exclusive 12 News monsoon meter as we look ahead to our Saturday, which will be the drier of the two days this weekend. I have a zero for the valley and western Arizona indicating dry weather, and we'll see about 20 to 30 percent coverage for the White Mountains as well as southeastern Arizona. So this will be mainly during the afternoon, dying down in the evening, and and then the coverage of showers and storms will be going up between Sunday and Wednesday. I'm tracking those chances coming up in my full forecast. Kariba. All right, Lindsay, thank you. New at 10, crews from two states are racing to repair U.S. Highway 64 on the Navajo Nation. The road was seriously damaged earlier this week as strong thunderstorms caused flooding in the area. Highway 64 connects Arizona and New Mexico, and we're told that this section of the road is right at the state line. Until it can be fixed, drivers are being sent north into Colorado. So far, there is no estimated time to reopen the highway. Also new tonight, Phoenix police have released this video showing what they say is an organized retail theft ring. You can see multiple people entering a store and then quickly leaving with bags full of merchandise. Phoenix police say this group also stole from stores in Texas and Nevada. According to the department, they got away with close to $78,000 worth of merchandise. We reached out for more details. We're still waiting to hear back. A major ruling from the Supreme Court has cleared the way for cities to enforce camping bans that usually impact the homeless population. These bans have been in an area of criticism and confusion for the city of Phoenix over the past few years with dueling lawsuits against the city. One claiming that Phoenix isn't doing enough to address safety and sanitary concerns and the other saying that the city is violating people's rights by clearing the encampments. The city council passed an updated camping ban just last month month that in part bans camping within 500 feet of schools, parks and shelters. The updated ordinance goes into effect in September now with added clarity on how they can enforce it from the Supreme Court. But not everyone is happy with the decision. We know from countless studies that criminalizing homelessness is not a solution. It's actually counterproductive. It makes it more likely that folks experiencing homelessness are not going to be able to find them uh, find stable housing and get out of that situation. Others supportive of the Supreme Court's ruling. One of the attorneys suing the city for not doing enough to keep streets clean and safe wrote that we, quote, hope all cities will immediately act to eliminate these encampments, restoring public safety, forcing many individuals with drug addiction and mental disease to take the treatment that they need.
Boy, last night's debate still making headlines. Tonight, as many undecided voters are weighing their options, fact checkers at Politico say former President Trump made three times the number of false statements last night as President Biden. But tonight, it's Biden's debate performance that also has people talking. Just a few hours ago, the New York Times editorial board called on the president to leave the race. Back here in Arizona, Governor Katie Hobbs is one of the few Arizona Democrats talking about the per president's performance last night. During today's taping of Sunday Square Off, Hobbs said she's focused on legislative races in Arizona that could give Democrats control of the Capitol, not the presidential election. But she also made it clear that she still supports the president. Should he step aside and allow another Democrat to run? Look, as you know, I am not a fan of debates, and um, I know the pundits like to talk about them, and I'll leave that to you. As the president himself has said, don't compare him to the almighty, compare him to the alternative, and by that metric, uh, the choice is abundantly clear in this race. Back in 2022, Katie Hobbs declined to debate Republican opponent Carrie Lake, and Lake wouldn't debate Mark Lamb, who she's running against in the Republican primary for U.S. Senate. You can watch Bram Resnick's one-on-one -on -one interview with the governor this Sunday morning at 8 a.m. here on 12. And this comes as Republican candidate for Senate Carrie Lake held an event in Southwest Phoenix talking about the economy. Lake told the audience that if elected, she would work on reducing the deficit and cutting inflation. So we need to get back uh, federal government to spending levels that are pre-COVID. Uh, we're still spending COVID levels. COVID's gone. We're, we don't need to spend that way. That was a mistake the way that the spending was uh, was rolled out. We're, we're printing money like there's no tomorrow. Now, inflation is under 3% in Arizona and lower than the national average, but the cost of living remains higher than the national average. 